Hello folks, this is Ginger Lion here. I'm doing a little bit of a thing off my normal beaten path. Uh, I've seen a lot of people recently playing Agrarian Skies, uh, and I've seen a lot of people working on exactly how to go about automating various processes. In fact, one of my favorite um, uh, YouTubers, Purple Menta, uh, set up a pretty complicated and wonderful system for automating, um, and I wanted to send him a little, here's a suggestion kind of thing about how to um, make it a little bit better. So, let me show everyone around first so they know what's going on. First, we have this series of igneous extruders over here set up just making cobblestone. They're all set up exactly the same. They're exporting that cobblestone into my ME network. Um, these are things that you can make in the Agrarian Skies mod, in fact, they're not all that far away from home, uh, frankly. Um, so they're set up pumping cobblestone in. Then I have a set of pulverizers over here. Three of them are pulverizing cobblestone into gravel. Two of them are pulverizing gravel into sand. And one of them is pulverizing sand into dust. Um, I guarantee Purple Mentat recognizes this basic setup. I'm running it all off, off a creative energy cell. That's because I'm in creative right now. And just giving people some idea how to use this thing. Now, next over here... Now, this is a uh, maximum possible configuration. I have a set of eight autonomous activators. These four on the bottom pointed in, that one pointed up, and those two pointed in from the sides, all set up to right-click, not sneaking, the ones on the bottom on the edges are set to aim high, the rest of them are set, set aim level, and what they're doing is basically whacking this sieve, thus automatically causing it to sieve through whatever's in it. And this one over here, I've set up an export bus to export gravel into it. So this, and that's an identical setup over there, and this is a vacuum hopper set up up here. Um, you ha need yourself an ender pearl to make one of these, but then again, that's not too far from home, um, and that's just sucking up the exported results of all of these. Again, uh, I guarantee Purple Mentat will recognize this configuration, um, and this is, well, it's not running yet, but this is what's going to allow us to break our various types of ore. Now, what we're getting out of this are coal, diamonds, flint, lapis lazuli, emeralds, um, and broken ores of all types, along with some amber, some apatite, and some quicksilver drops. Now, yeah, it looks like I'm not keeping quite up with the gravel needs of my system. Let me, let me toss a little bit more in so that it stops flickering like that. Again, I am in creative at the moment. I'm not trying to disguise that in any way, shape, or form. I'm just trying to show... So now, what Purple Mentat did is he set up a bank of, let's see, well, how many ores are here? Nine, because there's nine across on a standard inventory. So he set up a bank of 36 of these. Nine of them to combine each broken aluminum ore into ore gravel, and then it, it got crushed here and fed back into the system. Um, and assembled up on the line. Now, here's the problem with that. Each one of these is an entity in the world which sucks up processor power. Um, it toggles on and off, so it takes up visual issues. Um, and it uses 20 RF a tick. So if you add that up times 20, 36 of these, that's a pretty significant power draw. So, what I wanted to propose was this, having, you know, being a guy who works a lot with ME, I think that this can be done much more efficiently using an ME system. So now let me show you how, what the parts are that you're going to need before we uh, uh, go on to this. Now the first thing you're going to need are assembler containment walls. Let me actually just go here. The assembler containment walls are gold and certus and iron. Nothing significant. You're going to need heat vents, which are a little bit more expensive, mostly because they use the ME cable in the middle. You're going to need crafting CPUs. They do use an advanced processor. I'm going to use four of them in my build. Um, and you need a pattern provider, which also uses a diamond processor. So I'm going to use up eight diamonds in the build here. I really think it's going to be worth it. Let me show you the basic configuration, and I'll explain to you what I'm doing as I do it. I'm actually going to do it in creative flight. So, the first thing that you need to do 
is lay out the borders of your ME assembler chamber in these assembler containment walls. You can make this multi-block just about any size and shape you like. Um, it has to have some hollow space in the middle, at least one block worth of hollow space in the middle, mind you. Doesn't need to be more than that. Um, or you can make it, my understanding is, you can make it a 9 by 9 by 9 um, as a max size and it'll work just fine. Now, the interiors of this actually affect how it functions. That's why there are advantages to making it larger. Um, also, you need to fill all the sides in with heat vents. Now, if I were actually doing this in agrarian skies, I would be doing it on a platform, probably a platform that's several blocks deep so that I didn't have to worry about explosions and that sort of thing. But, so again, assembler containment walls and heat vents make up the edges and the center pieces. Now, what goes inside is this, crafting CPUs. Now, each crafting CPU, the block itself will do one crafting action per second. Each CPU added will do one more. So this will do five actions a second, or one every four, uh, five? One every four ticks. Now, the other thing that goes in here what are called pattern providers. Each one of these pattern providers can hold uh, 30, uh, we'll see in just a minute, but a number of recipes. So let's close it up, and you'll notice that it's immediately going to multi-block and it connects to my network. So, I actually, the first issue is, how much power does this use? So, uh, this is an import bus, that's fine. Right now, my network is using 7.2, 7.1 or 7.2 Minecraft joules a tick. Uh, for those who don't know, um, we're actually powering this out of redstone flux, so move the decimal point one, so it's actually using between 71 and 72 Minecraft joules a tick. If I go ahead, and this was an import bus, let me grab an import bus, if we connect to this, it just went up to 9. So it is using um, slightly less than 20 RF ticks. So this entire multi-block is using less power than one cyclic assembler, which means that if it can do the job of a cyclic assembler for us, then maybe we don't need a bank of 36 cyclic assemblers to do our job? Let's find out. Now you do need one pattern encoder. Now, again, 63. Each one of those pattern pr um, providers inside holds 63 recipes. So this pattern encoder um, allows us to make those recipes. So what do we need to do this? Well, we need a bunch of these ME blank patterns. Now, the recipe for these is not completely cheap. It's a certus quartz and some glowstone dust, but in sieving, we get glowstone dust at a reasonable frequency, and I guarantee that Purple Mentat has more than enough glowstone dust at the moment to work with, especially because he just accessed the nether. So, I'm going to get myself a stack of them. Let's see, Emmy blank patterns. And you toss them in here. I just go in here, and they sit there. Now, what are we going to do with them? Well, we have all these ores. So let's start with the first one on my list. Well, actually, let's, let's do all of them. One, two, three, four, no, five, six, seven, eight, get that cable back, I'll use it. And nine. So we come over here, we don't need all the, we need one of each type, and we just make the pattern. Is that the pattern? Um, and unfortunately, sometimes the, this won't automatically detect it, so let me, what are the uses of broken aluminum? Ah, I put the pattern in wrong, that would be why it Okay, so now, we're going to encode this, and then we're going to take this out. If you press, 
you hover over it, you can see what it is that it does. So now I'm going to do one for each. Let's clear these out. Clear. Fill. Encode. I'm actually going to line them up above here it's just for easy ease of use. Now this isn't the most exciting thing in the world, but I want to show you guys all the process, and I want to make sure that anyone else who follows along behind um, can do it just as easily. Now basically what you're doing in this process is you're teaching the AE system how to make a thing. Out of a cr in a standard crafting grid. At the moment, we can only do things that are in a standard crafting grid, but that's just fine. I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, that's, <laughs> frankly, Purple Mentat and anyone else who's working with this has more than enough automatic crafting utilities. What we want is one that's generic and works well. So now, I know how to make all of these things. So what good is that for me? Well, let me actually, I put the wrong type of export bus here, so I don't want to confuse anyone in this process. There, let me get rid of those. So I've taught the system how to craft those things. You notice they're all listed here as craftable. Let me put my various ores back in, and I'm going to ask it to craft one of each. You'll notice it's really quick about that. That's because, like I said, I put enough processors in there that it can craft... Um, should be five entities a second. Can process five crafting requests a second, basically. There we go. That's all of that. Now, I want an... Oop. That's not working. Keep doing that. I would like a precision export bus connected to here. And what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to set this in move single items slash craft. And I'm going to fill it with eight of these nine. I'm not going to really give it all nine, unfortunately. If you'll notice, what it's doing right now, it is already filling them. And I made a significant mistake in terms of not putting a block there feel just a little bit silly about that. So let's see if I can... Oops. Broke the wrong one. Just a second, folks. This is, this is me being just a little bit derpy. Um, I wanted autonomous activators. I would like them configure this one configured here, and this one configured here. This one's going to fill with hammers as soon as I tell it it's allowed to, and it's going to left-click with those hammers. That was a little derpy of me. That's fine. Um, and this one is going to... Let's see, this one is left-clicking. No, I want this one. Yeah, that one left clicks, this one right clicks. I need to allow it to accept from the back. And in fact, I'm going to have it accept from all the sides I possibly can. Um, there, fixed that. Sorry about that, folks. So now, let me... And this is another thing that I think should be mm, a changed in some of the systems I've seen. Um, if you seal this in... It's going to be much cleaner about where it produces its items and sends them over to the vacuum hopper there. Um, it looks like my vacuum hopper is being slightly overloaded. So, I'm going to replace the import bus with a precision import bus. Sorry about this, folks. This wasn't what I was intending to show you, but that's fine. Um... So what I'm running into is the system isn't able to keep up with all the items being produced. So what I think I'm going to do is break this. I'm going to put in another another vacuum hopper, basically. So I want a precision export bus 
precision import bus. Come on. And a vacuum hopper. And let's set the vacuum hopper to export on that side. And let's set this to move stacks of items. There. That solved that, and let me move this, switch this one over to also a precision bus, uh, and allow it to accept stacks of items. And there. Now, I have more than enough capability to suck in all the items that I'm producing. Again, sorry about that, folks. That was not exactly what I was intending to do, but it got the... Whole, it showed some of the potential problems with this system. So now, I've set up a system that is effectively duplicating a system that I already saw uh, and that I like, but I think has some room for potential expansion or improvement in it. There, everything's stable, and I can delete all of these extra hammers that I did not need. And... Let's go ahead and sort my inventory out. Now, get all this stuff up there. I don't need it right now. So, we've taught this system how to assemble all of these gravels, and then we've taught this to take those gravels and break them up. Now, let me look in the system. You'll probably notice that we now have all of these ores, but we don't, the, and in fact, the only one that we have enough of to make a bunch is aluminum. We have a lot of aluminum ore gravel and a lot, lot of broken copper ore. Did I miss setting up broken copper ore? There's my copper ore. And let's go find out why aluminum isn't working. Now, I know that I need one more precision export bus in this process. That's fine. So now, how is this configured? Aluminum, nickel, lead, tin. So it is configured for aluminum, and it looks like it's pushing out... Looks like it's pushing out all the aluminum right now. Is that what I'm seeing? No, it's doing iron ore gravel at the moment. Ah, it is working its way through the various things that it's been taught how to make and what to do with, um, sort of in order. It's using up all of the various things that it can make. So now let's see, is it, is it working on aluminum right now? No. What is this? This is not full at all. That's fine. So now, I'm going to set up another export bus here, set also to move single or craft, and I'm going to set it up with copper. So what that's going to do, you'll notice the copper ticking down here, that's because the system is requesting that copper ore gravel as fast as it can. It's now stabilized. There's not, not, there's not four of any one of these, and as soon as one comes in, it crafts the necessary and feeds it to this over here. So, what's our next step? Well, our next step is th the various crushed ores. One, two, three, four, five, six, oop, seven, eight, and I missed one, and it's probably there, silver. So now, we're going to come over here and teach this how to do the same thing with all of these crushed ores to make sands. Clear, fill, encode. This way, now, we could skip all of these steps. Now, we, we could just simply smelt the, the whatever it is that we receive and not go through this process. But by going through this process, what we're effectively doing is increasing the amount of ore that we got out of each cobblestone that we processed. And to some of us, that's worth it. To me, it's worth it when the time comes for my agrarian skies 
um, let's play to reach here, I guarantee I will go through this same process as well, because I want to have as many resources available to me as possible, and I really hate it when my bottleneck is that I can't make something because I'm missing some gold, when I could have done the work to make the gold. So now, I want to make one of each of these sands. Now it's starting to get a little annoying to me the way this is flickering back and forth and jumping, so what I'm going to do is sand. And I'm going to craft one of each. And I'm going to take them all down into my inventory. And I'm going to need one more precision export bus. So what I'm going to do is now, again, add each one of these in order making sure that I don't miss any, to my export bus. And add one more export bus down here on the bottom, which I'm going to need a cable to connect it. There. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Where's my cable? There it is. Set this to also craft, and put the last two in here. You'll notice it's feeding things in. Um, it's Each one of those export buses is trying to do its best to keep up with what's available and what's requested. Now, let's go ahead, and you'll notice that it's working its way down through getting rid of all of the various um, crushed ores. It's not doing everything, but every time it has an opportunity, it's feeding that into the system. And this is working just as fast as it can in an attempt to keep up with these two sieves. How much power are we using? We now have, now that the process is working as fast as it can, we are up to 10. 10.1 even. So we went from 70 to 100 um, RF being used. So now we are using 30 RF. Remember, we were replacing a large bank of 20 RF a tick items with a single multi-block that doesn't have anywhere near the processor drain and clearly uses much, much less power. And now... We want pulverized. We don't have all of them yet. But, let me get one of each of the ones that I can. Let's see, what don't we have? Let's look. I bet we don't have any pulverized copper. Yeah, it'll be the last one that's got to. It's just usually the last one that I have in my list. Um, let's just give it just a minute. Go over there and wait till we see the first copper pass through. You, so you'll notice this system is working as fast as it possibly can. It's possible that this two sieve system will at some point overload this, but I doubt it. I think that two sieves running at full power are not really going to be able to overpower this, though you'll notice it's pretty full of a lot of things. Now let me just make sure that I did put copper in one of these. It would be sad if the reason it wasn't working is because I missed it. No, it's there.
Now, the advantage to this system is that it works autonomously, it works quickly, um, it's a single process, which by the way, once you have this set up, why not do things like teaching it how to make processor assemblies, teaching it how to make quartz cutting edge, teaching it how to make all the various things that you use in the process of using your AE system. So, I'm actually going to just cheat in the pulverized copper dust just to get this done quickly um, and these are all X nylo so there's pulverized copper X nylo so the one last thing that we want to teach our system is once you have these to form them into the aluminum or the various ore dusts and the reason we do that is that then we can set up an export bus to whatever our smelting system is, uh, whether we're going to use the smeltery. Um, in my particular case, I think that I'm going to go a different direction. I'm probably going to use... Well, uh, let me see if I can even use them. Um, I was thinking about using thermal expansions. Oop. Now, here's what happens if you accidentally create something you don't want. You put it in your hand, shift, right click. It's now blank again. You can put it back in the blank collection. Clear that. I was thinking about using thermal expansions, um, the, the second tier furnace. Just a minute. My brain can't do two things at once apparently right now. Let me clear all this, get all this encoded. and put all these encoded patterns in the system. Dust, 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 dust. Now, we don't have a lot of tubes or cables running around the place. We don't have a lot of those extra things that can produce quite a lot of lag just to keep up with the existing entities. Um, let's see, this is finished off completely. Let me go see what my copper situation is. So let's go ahead and craft copper. Why do we have one copper or sand that isn't going anywhere? I don't like that at all. Let me troubleshoot my system for a moment. We have copper or sand there. Let's go ahead and put it in here as well. There's no reason not to put it in two places if it's, if it's causing a problem. There we are. Copper or crushed copper ore is becoming copper ore sand, which is becoming pulverized copper ore just like I wanted it to. Good. We basically just told two buses to get on the job, uh, and both of them are now trying instead of just one. Now, we can set up our AE system to export, whether it be to a smeltery or not, uh, we can set up our AE system to export rather than, again, having to run lots of pipes and tubes um, and have anything complicated going on. Since we're not going to be sending more than eight types of ore to any given device anyway, it's almost irrelevant. Now, we're making lots of sand. Let me take a look at thermal expansion. I actually need to step out of that because they're synchronized. Mod, thermal expansion, and I was looking at the induction smelter. So let me put down an induction smelter. So just put it down right here for the moment. Take a look at its recipes and see if it can handle, it should be able to handle, um, these blocks. Nether ores, ardite dust. Let me go out of the opposite direction. Let's go ahead and do tin. I want ore dust. Yes. Let's just grab one of the aluminum and find out what the uses are for it. It does not, it claims that it does not have a recipe for the induction smelter. So let me check, grab a little bit of sand. This is the standard way of, let's see, how much do I have? I have one, let's grab ten. There. 
And we'll grab enough sand to make sure that if there's a recipe, I found it. It will cook in the induction smelter. Let's see, 11 and 64, 10. And it makes two aluminum ingots. Now, I know that this uses power, and it uses more power than the smeltery, but it doubles our ores just like the smeltery does, and to me it's a lot faster and it's a lot cleaner. So I would recommend using the induction smelter instead of the smeltery. More, less space, a little more power, but we've just saved ourselves a huge amount of power here. Um, I think it'll be worth it. The advantage is... Let me, let me just show you the ex whole configuration since I can right now. I need green, purple. Let's configure this. Green, purple. Let's turn this off and this off and set this to there. So now I am going to export to here and here and I'm going to yeah you know, I'm, I'm basic import bus should be just fine for here set us up a little bit of cable now green is going to be set up to export stacks of sand simple direct easy this should fill up with sand, just did. Now these are all exporting just like I wanted them to. So let's come over here. This is a last configuration suggestion. Aluminum, begin, copper. No, I want dust. Now, I just asked some things to be made that it doesn't know how to make. This is probably a good point to discuss the crafting monitor. If you uh, make yourself a crafting monitor and attach it, it will show you what jobs your system is currently requesting. Um, doing this, they will tend to stack up. Shift click, and that will make them go away. That way your jobs don't just stack up over time, They but it's not going to hurt the system at all to be requesting to make all of these things. It won't do it until it has the materials. So anyway, I want a dust. I want one of everything. I'm not going to be able to use one furnace for everything. So I'm actually going to get almost everything. Copper, begin. Gold, begin. Iron, Again. Actually, I think aluminum is the one that I care the least about <laughs> in, from an actual game perspective. Um, nickel. Platinum. Silver. Tin. Okay. So, again, we're going to configure this bus to move and craft, and we're going to put all of the ores in here. It only has eight spaces. So yes, you may have to make yourself a second furnace if you want all of them. And then you might want to split it up, five and four, just to make sure that a processing happens efficiently. But what's going to happen is it's going to make every single of the type that it can. And it'll make the first one in the list, and then it will process them through. Um, and then it will try to do the same with copper and gold and iron, which means that you do have a bit of a bottleneck. It'll only make one type of thing at a time, and it will then move on. But it won't be rel all that long before you've worked through your bottleneck in your entire system, and then this furnace will run most of the time, but it will toggle back and forth between all the types that it makes. Again, if you make two furnaces, that'll make it a lot easier. So now we've got an import going in of sand to make sure that this occurs. We've got an import of dust making that happen, and we're exporting from over here, pulling out all the things that we care about. Done and done. And finally, let me just check. And occasionally, it will make you some rich slag out of the deal, which you can use when you well, let's see. What, what advantage would we have in this particular circumstance? If you want to... Ooh. If you want to make get three 
of something for a period of time, you can export your rich slag into the left slot. You're not going to have enough rich slag to do that all the time, so sand is your first to go to, but eventually you'll have a stockpile of rich slag, and then when you need yourself a whole bunch of extra gold or a whole bunch of extra iron, which, as has been pointed out many times, is at a premium in this mod pack, you can set up just one furnace that just does iron and rich slag, and it will fill with iron and when it gets rich slag, it'll then process. The rich slag will be your bottleneck. So, I just wanted to propose that that might be a little bit faster, easier, and less both processor and power intensive system um, than working exclusively with the cyclic assemblers. That making use of AE's um, assembly system is probably a good idea. Um, and isn't, isn't all that difficult. It's just a little bit intimidating for those who have never worked with the AE system before. So, I hope you guys liked the video. I'll see you soon.